Poetry is wonderful. Within poetry are hidden, hidden gemstones of life-changing words. Life-changing words full of substance. That's where the change comes from, is the substance. It's not the words. It's the substance within the words. And the substance within the words is connected all the way back to the Father of Lights. And He's the one who changes you. Because those words pull you all the way into the glory where the person is, and then the person just comes right into you. Boom! It's like, oh, you received my word. So here's what this word means. And it, boom! He explodes out of you as beautiful poetry. A recreated people that will fulfill the destiny He has given each of us, for we are joined to Jesus, the Anointed One. He's the Anointed One. Get in the Anointed One, you'll be anointed. <laughs> God, give me the anointing. We'll get in the Anointed One. Let His anointing just ooze out of you, through you, to you. Like, just let the anointed one anoint you. Anoint you for burial and resurrection. <laughs> yep. Hallelujah. Only dead people see God. <laughs> dead in Christ and risen. Unless God reveals it by His grace. He's been giving like people dreams about Jesus, how He's real and stuff like that. Because, well, they're dead. They're dead in their sins. So. <laughs> so he just reveals life to them. Jesus, thank you for revelation. Whoa, man. There's a lot of revelation in here. Holy Ghost. Hey, man, I can do nothing apart from myself. So, hallelujah. A recreated people? Wow. You're not even of this world anymore. You're of the kingdom of heaven, man. Doo doo. That will fulfill the destiny He has given each of us. He gave you a destiny in heaven, and He wants He puts you on the earth to translate you back into heaven, so you can have your body, have His body on the earth. And it's like He's manifesting heaven through your body on the earth. It's like you're a king of kings. I mean, He's the king of kings, so you're a king. A king is one who exercises authority and dominion and rulership so he's the king of kings he's the king of all the kings and he's ruling through the kings he's the lord of lords he's being lord through his lords you know he doesn't have to use us but he's, he's just chosen to use us he does you know he's the body of christ you know we're the body of christ i mean he's the head you know so he, the head is the one who actually governs the body the head turns that way, the body should follow the head, you know? It's basic uh, uh, science. <laughs> he has given each of us, for we are joined to Jesus, the Anointed One. Even before we were born, God, God planned it in advance, our destiny. I just said that. Wow, that's so cool. Even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny and the good works we would do to fulfill it. So if you want to fulfill your destiny, you got to do good works. Good works is not you doing something out of your own imagination and heart or whatever. That's fine. God will put stuff in you. Like the deepest desire, godly desire. Whoa, I feel a lot of Holy Ghost. The deepest desire and godly desires within your heart that God has planted there, that's your destiny. I'll share, I'll share mine with you. The deepest desire in my heart is to know Him. My, the deepest desire in my heart is to be God's friend. You know why? Because if, God, if, if I'm God's friend, I'll be close to Him. And if I'm close to God, he can do what he wants through me because I'm his. I'm, like he's my best friend. I I don't want to do anything to hurt him. I want to be close to him. I wanna I want to hold his arm and just not let go. I want to hold his feet and just kiss his feet and never let go. I want to sit at his feet and listen to his words and just let his words just wash right through me. 
I, he's my best friend. God is my best friend. People on earth are awesome, but no one has been as nice to me as God. And if the re one of the other reasons that I want to be his best friend is because his desires, he wants his family back. That's why Jesus came, is because he wants to walk with us each and individually and collectively in the Garden of Eden, in the Garden of Paradise. He wants to walk with his creation again. And he wants to walk not just with us, he wants to walk in us and us in him. It's the Star of David. You know, body, soul, and spirit within the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. He wants to walk in us, joined as one, one spirit, one mind, one accord. The three points of the star, the three points of the star. God wants to be in us, and God wants us in Him. Unseparable. The Holy Spirit said to me, we're going to be together forever. I want to be His best friend forever. I don't want to just be a friend. I want to be His best friend. I want to be as close to Him as I can possibly, possibly ever get in this life. If I can get close to Him in this life, I'll be close to Him in the next life to come. So my whole plan is to give everything away, everything that would hinder me from walking close to Him. You know, I have video games on my iPad. I still play video games, but there's nothing wrong with that, but, but there's more. There's more. There's more to life than playing video games. There's more to life than cooking dinner. You can play video games and speak in tongues and search for the presence of God. You can cook dinner and meditate on the marriage supper of the Lamb. How you're going to feast with Him one day in eternity without separation, without separation of soul or, or, or the flesh or the atmosphere. Or you can do the dishes. You can think, oh wow, this is like the washing of the water of the Word. It's like I may have messed up, but God's washing me clean and He's washing all this filth off of me. You can be walking, going to your job and thinking, uh, you know, like, wow, I have work to do. I just got to let God do His work through me my real job is to manifest him or you could just be walking through a mall and see all the people who don't know him say God I'm just gonna pray for all these people in the mall right now because I know that you want them to be walking with you not just to buy stuff but to pay the price to walk with you in the glory pay the price to spend time with you or you could be reading the Bible and say, wow, there's, these words are great. I love reading all these stories, but these stories should lead me to the person who actually put them there. Not, not, not the Apostle Paul. That's good. Like, I'm, I'd be so happy to see the Apostle Paul. But the Apostle Paul got his stuff by God. I want to meet the author. I want to meet the, the Spirit. I want to know him closer than a brother. I want to know Him so deep, so intimate, that nothing could ever separate us again. Not even my, my thoughts, my, my thought life, my, my, my fears, <laughs> they're not even using my fears, it's just the fear of the enemy. So that's my deepest desire. I want to be God's friend. I don't care about a ministry. Who cares about ministry? <laughs> If, but if he has a ministry and he wants me to be mature and to govern it, then of course I'm going to do that because that's his desire. You know, love your wife. I, I love my wife. It's, she's so easy to love. She's like, she's so full of God and full of love. She's one of the most selfless people I know. And I, I love my wife. Like, But... Compared to Jesus, my wife is like, she can't even, like not even one one thousandth of a, like, you can't even compare it. I mean, I can see God coming through her and it just makes me more hungry for God. Like, you know, I just, when I look at my wife, I want God. I mean, I love my wife, but I, that love just makes me, stirs me up to want more of God. I want God. I want I want to be able to express my love freely to God without restraint. 
so that he can express his love freely to me without, extra without restraint. Amen. Sidetrack. Get your desires in order. You know, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord though. Put all your delight inside the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord. When you're in the Lord delighting, <laughs> He'll give you the desires of your heart. Because in that delight comes that openness of freeness of heart. The desires from God flow into your heart. And what are those desires? We have become His poetry. A recreated people that will fulfill the destiny He has given each of us. For we are joined to Jesus, the Anointed One, even before we were born. God planned in advance our destiny. Our destiny is another way of saying our desires. Your, your desires are, to, are to, be, to walk out the destiny that God has planned for you. You already agreed with it in eternity before you came here. He breathed into Adam's and body and then he became a living, you know, he became alive. Shaka. And the good works we would do to fulfill it. You know, doing good works is just letting God do with you, your destiny. Whatever's written on your destiny scroll. My destiny scroll, so far all I know is God has given me a heart to love Him. And then He's put His heart within my heart to love other people. And uh, sometimes it, it doesn't look like love when you uh, rebuke someone. Like even Paul, he's like, I, I, I was sorrowed for a season uh, so that the people would repent. But he rejoiced though, even though he was sorrowful. Like, because you, he can see a little bit higher than those people were at. And, you'll, and it's the same thing with you. You're, when you're walking in a certain level of God and people are not walking in that level and they're still like walking in their beast nature and wanting to bait you and fight you and just like try to make you into the fallen image of what you came out of. It's like you rebuke them in love because there's a spirit of love and then uh, but then they turn around and they attack you and slander your name but you still continue to love them but they make you uh, basically <laughs> You look bad. You look like you don't love that person by rebuking them. <laughs> but I don't know, whatever. Enough of that stuff. Like just stay in the love of God. Stay in the anointing. Stay in the glory, which is the person. And desire Him. Put all your desires in Him. I think it's Psalm 32 or, or Psalm 34. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. I'll come back to Ephesians in a second. Let's read it right now. Psalms are so thick. There's a lot of glory in them. I think it's Psalm 32. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Love covers a multitude of sins. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all day long. For day and night, my, th for day and night, thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my, my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Okay, that's not it. Shaka. Must be Psalm 30, uh, 34. Jesus help shut I forgot all this stuff. I used to, I used to like, <laughs> I used to study this thing inside and out until I got into the audio Bibles, and now it's like I always lose my place. It's like, where did I read that? <laughs> uh, let's just, okay, let's read Psalm 34. Spirit of God, teach me. Spirit of God, help. Amen. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. Hallelujah. That makes me happy already. <laughs> I will bless the Lord at all times. When I'm going through a trial, when I'm going through the good times, when I'm in the bad times and in the good times, trials and tribulating, 
you know, I'm in the glory and I'm, I'm going through the gory. <laughs> bless the Lord, you know. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Let all that is within me bless your holy name, God. Your name is awesome. Shaka, I will bless you at all times, God. You know, his praise shall be continually in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. The pride won't probably hear anything. You know, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Come on, seek God. They looked unto him and their and were lightened. Their faces were not ashamed. Whoa, I had a vision of that a long time ago. That's cool. This, co this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Glory to God. Nothing wrong with crying out to God. He'll save you out of all your troubles. Hallelujah. That's in the Bible. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. You want deliverance? The angel of the Lord encamps around about those who fear him. The Spirit of God. I don't know who the angel of the Lord. God, let the angel of the Lord encamp around about everyone watching this video. And let the spirit of the fear of the Lord, the Holy Spirit of the fear of the Lord, come upon us, God. So that we will not sin against you and we will realize the awe and the wonder of God. We want to see the awe and the wonder and the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Shatakaramababa. Oh, taste and see. Oh, it's actually from here. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, fear the Lord. I just prayed for that. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. That's in the Bible. Whoa! Taste and see. I want to taste the Lord, man. I want to see the Lord. That the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Father, we just welcome the spirit of the fear of the Lord just to come. I don't want to be, I don't want to want. It says right here that, whoa. There is no want to them that fear him. Wow. I felt I felt something just come in the room. Fear of the Lord, Holy Spirit. Let the spirit of the fear of the Lord come. Shut up. There is no want to them that fear him. Mushatakara. Fear the Lord, ye his saints. There is no want to them that fear him. I just read that like five times or three times. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Oh man, I'm getting a, I'm getting a lot of peace. I feel a lot of peace. You know what? If you don't feel peace, open up your Bible and read Psalm 34 out loud and believe it. See the substance on it? Like just see the substance with your heart. Holy Goshata. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Even the knowledge of good <laughs> and evil, they don't want that. They have the best portion, the Lord. Come, ye children, hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Yes, Lord, teach me the fear of the Lord. Teach me, O oh God. Teach us the fear of the Lord, Lord. Teach us, God. Holy Spirit, teach us the fear of the Lord. I don't want to lack any good thing. I don't want to lack anything. I don't want to be in lack of anything. When I have the fear of the Lord, I lack nothing. I have all I need. I have God. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? <clears throat> There's some conditions here. Keep shakaramamah. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. 
the face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Double confirmation. Look at this. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Verse 4 also says, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. He'll deliver you from fear, and he'll deliver you from troubles. Call on the Lord. Get the fear of the Lord. Speak words of wisdom and life and peace and truth by the Spirit. And, the, and when the righteous cry out, he's going he's gonna to hear you. The Lord is nigh or near unto them that are of a broken heart and save us such as of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. There it is again the third time. He'll deliver you from all your fears. He'll deliver you from all your troubles. And he'll deliver you from all of your afflictions. Isn't that good? Wow, we're getting so taught here. I'm getting taught. <laughs> taught. Wow. Shut up. Thank you, Father. He that keepeth his bones. Oh, he keepeth all his bones. Not one of them is broken. It's talking about, it's a prophetic picture of Jesus. Shut up. He keepeth all of his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. Wow. So it's kind of like what you reap is what you'll sow. You sow evil, you'll reap evil, and it'll, be, it'll slay you. You sow righteousness, and that will slay you. <laughs> it'll slay, slay the evil in you that's not even you. You know? <laughs> you want God. You want God just to wash over you with rivers of life. Hallelujah. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. That means you're always going to be full. You can be continually full of the Holy Ghost if you're just continually pursuing him. Let's do that right now. Holy Ghost. I love the Bible, man. These are just keys. It's like, oh, I'm coming in, Jesus. I'm coming into the kingdom. Thank you for the blood. Oh, I walk in. Hi, Daddy. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, fresh bread. Oh, revelation. Hi. <laughs> Cloud of witnesses. Glory. <laughs> Jesus is here. Hallelujah. You can just receive the presence of the Lord. Amen. Just receive. There's three keys that He just released to us. He's going to deliver us out of our affliction. <laughs> He's going to deliver us from all of our fears. And He's going to deliver us from all of our troubles. If we... If we... Uh, what was the condition here? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good and seek peace and pursue it. So you seek the peace and when the peace manifests, like, I'm not letting you go. I know who you are. Oh, Prince of Peace. I want to come closer to you, Prince of Peace. You're a principality of peace. Wow. Just let that principality just rule the whole world. Peace. Shabba. Hallelujah. Amen, man. You know that Jesus is a principality of peace? Wow, shaka. Here, let's get some... Uh, I want you to listen to this. This is called... Uh, uh, oh, never mind. I was going to play the Bible... <laughs> oh man. Jesus is king. Shaka Bubba. There we go. Yeah. Okay, I'll be right back. I think I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> I think I gotta go. I I you know what, man? Jesus is amazing man. How does he 
stand there and preach for three days without going to the bathroom man if anybody has revelation on this please send me a message i need the i need a new body man because this one has to go to the bathroom i, I drink a lot of tea that could be the problem maybe i just maybe I, i'm a i'm in bondage to tea or something. i'm a slave of the natural tea I just like it because it keeps my voice strong. But I'll be right back. I have to go to the bathroom and it is perfectly normal. So uh, I'm not a professional teacher or preacher. But we're going to get back in some deep revelation in the Holy Ghost. Spirit of Revelation's here. Prince of Peace is here. So this is going to be a good 10 hours. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Enjoy. Shaka. Right now, just sit there and enjoy the presence of the Lord. Oh, shut up. Hallelujah, man. Thank you, Father, for that. Okay, we're back. Back into heavenly places in Christ. <laughs> just had to go, uh, you know, just had to go adjust uh, the earth suit. Oh, my tea. <laughs> my addiction. Let's read that again. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. I sought the Lord, and He heard me, and delivered me from all my troubles. Well, evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. You know, God is good. He's the one who uh, delivers us. We can't, we can't do anything apart from Him. <laughs> Wouldn't want to. Hallelujah. Okay, shut up. Oh yeah, we were in Ephesians. Let's get let's get deeper into that. There's a lot of glory on this book, man. Shut up. We have become his poetry. A created people that will fulfill the destiny he has given each of us, for we are joined to Jesus, the anointed one. Even before we were born. God planned in advance our destiny and the good works we would do to fulfill it. So don't forget your history. You were from non-Jewish ethnicities, whatever, and were uncircumcised. In brackets it says, circumcision itself is just a work of man's hands. <laughs> you had none of the Jewish covenants and laws. You were foreigners to Israel's incredible heritage. You were without the covenant and prophetic promise of the Messiah, the promised hope. 
and without God. Yet look at you now. Everything is new. You are found complete in the faith of Jesus the Messiah. And because of this, all because of His glorious grace. Thank you, Jesus, for your glorious grace. Thank you, Jesus, for your glorious face. I just received the grace of God right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Shatakarma. Shikareke. Although you were once distant and far away from God, now you have been brought delightfully close to Him through the sacred blood of Jesus. You have actually been united to Christ. It's all throughout this book. One. See, this. a lot of people think Ephesians is about, you know, a man and a wife. It's, it's prophetic pictures, but yeah, it's all about Christ and His bride. The deeper you go, the deeper you'll see that revelation unravel. Let's go, Holy Ghost. Show us, Lord. Oh, shut up. Our reconciling peace is Jesus. He has made Jew and non-Jew one in Christ by dying as our sacrifice. He has broken down every wall of prejudice and separated us and has now made us equal through our union with Christ. Ethnic hatred has been dissolved by the crucifixion of his precious body on the cross. So are you, <laughs> are you racist? Man, don't be dumb. <laughs> Your identity is in Christ. Racism is of the fallen nature and the fallen nature is pure stupidity. Don't get racist. <laughs> the devil's stupid, okay? And you can tell racism because you get mad. <laughs> like you manifesting that angry spirit, like trying to defend your uh, ethnic background or whatever. You're, at, you're dead, man. We are dead. Who cares if someone, you know, calls me a name or something? I'm dead. I've never seen one dead person jump out of the grave and get offended. Ethnic hatred. Ethnic hatred has been dissolved by the crucifixion of his precious body on the cross. That's you too. You were crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, you live. Yet not you, but Christ lives in you. Hallelujah. God, I just thank you for the spirit. Ooh. The more I thank God, the more I just keep feeling waves of glory. God, I thank you for crucifying us. <laughs> God, I thank you for just putting us to death in Christ and raising us up to sit with you in heavenly realms. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The legal code that stood condemning every one of us has now been replaced by his command. His triune essence has made peace between us by starting over, forming one new man. Jews and non-Jews fused together. I'm just going to get my tea. Drink. Shaka. Glory, 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 glory. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I'm spilling it everywhere. Yeah, God, let my cup overflow. It gets so whacked. <clears throat> one body, one Lord of all, one Father, one Master, Jesus, 333. Wow, it's 333. Shaka. Let's call upon God. Here, let's, we'll come back to that. <laughs> Holy Ghost. You know, this is the way life should be. You're just sitting here in the presence of God. <laughs> Jeremiah 33, verse 3. I don't know if you can focus on that. But my Bible says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee mighty things, great and mighty things, 
which thou knowest not. Holy Ghost, Father, we just call upon you right now. We ask you to show us great and mighty things that we do not know. God, show us great and mighty things that we all... I just see the body of Christ. I'm interpreting that, is that. You know what holds the body of Christ together? Christ. He's the glue. He's the spirit. He's the one who brings unity. Perfect unity is in Christ. With, apart from Christ, there's no unity. It's unity of the flesh. <laughs> it's, uni it's unity of man-made ways, which will burn. It's wood, hay, and stubble. Rock is revelation. Rock is Christ. Uh, Jacob poured the oil on the rock, rested his head upon it, the heavens opened. Come on. Just rest. Your, enter into that rest. Enter into Christ Jesus. Christ is perfect unity in the spirit god i thank you right now for perfect unity in christ i thank you for perfect unity in the spirit i thank you god that i am fully complete in christ i am fully complete in the spirit of christ jesus my lord my master my king my savior my redeemer my healer my everything so shaka if you want true unity it's psalm 133 you want true unity? It's 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 the anointing. Shaka. Christ Jesus. Let's read true unity. Hallelujah. My Bible says. <laughs> I like saying that. I heard somebody else say that. My Bible says. Uh, <laughs> Psalm 133. You gotta have I'm, I'm not a very good Pentecostal talker. Some people, man, they can. They can really do that. I just, I just can't talk like that. I don't know why. I, have to, I guess I have to be myself. Here we go. Psalm 133 says, "Oh, look at that! I got, it, I got it all highlighted and everything." Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments, as the dew of Hermon, as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Let's read it again in the Holy Ghost. Behold, how good, no one is good but one, God. And how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity, to dwell together in the Spirit, to dwell together in Christ, to dwell together in the anointing, to dwell together in the ointment, to dwell together. It is like the precious ointment upon the head. The head is Jesus. He's the head of the body. That he, if He's the head of the body and He's anointed, that anointing just drips down to the rest of the body so that the whole body can be connected together in true unity. If there's no anointing, if there's no spirit, it's not true unity. There has to be the spirit of God. There has to be the anointing. True unity. We're unified in Christ, right? We're not unified in a Bible doctrine. Because even, even you know, religious people have doctrines and they don't even know God. We're unified in Christ, the substance of God, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of life. We're unified. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, and that went down to the skirts of his garments, from the head, crown of his head to the soles of his feet, just sopped in the anointing, baptized in the anointing, baptized in the liquid Shaka, God, right now just release the anointing to break the yoke off of everyone listening, or break the yoke from from where they are now and even into the future. Like just that timeline, just just pouring anointing oil so that their feet are just shod with butter, like their walk is just smooth and in the glory. Let their walk be in the butter and honey. Come on, let's read Job 31. I made a covenant with my eyes. 
Why then should I look upon a maid? For what portion of election? Let's read Job 29. If you go one verse before Job 29, it says, And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. That's Proverbs also 1.7, if you look at it. But Job 29. Moreover, Job continued his parable. A parable means that there's hidden truth within that, that parable. Can you see the substance of the hidden truth within the parable as we read it? Let the mind of Christ be activated in you. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, Oh, that I were as in months past in the days when God preserved me. You want preservation, huh? When his candle shined upon my head, like the wax is dripping down from the fires. You know, let everything that's not of God just melt away in the fire of God. Holy Ghost. In the days when God preserved me, when his candle, his candle, God's candle, shined upon my head, and when, and when by his light I walk through darkness, the prophet said to me, you shall see past the darkness. Why? It's the candle of the Lord. It's the lamp of the Lord. The candle of the Lord, you need the oil of the Holy Ghost to keep that candle burning. Stay on fire for God. It's one thing to be get lit up in a meeting. It's another thing to maintain that by relationship with the Holy Ghost. You need to pay the price and don't be a foolish virgin. Be a wise virgin. Don't say to the pastor, give me some of your oil. My lap, my, my fire's gone out. You know, jumpstart me. You know, those, those jump starter cables or whatever. Some people need that. But you can't depend on that because not every pastor will have a breakthrough. Not, you know, they, the wise said to the foolish, not so. Lest there not be enough for us and you. You gotta get your own relationship with God. Quit bumming the anointing off me, man. Go to God, get your own relationship, get your own oil so you can see past the darkness yourself. You can depend on me to feed you? <laughs> depend on the bread that came down from heaven. Depend on the lamp of the Lord. Holy Ghost. <laughs> right here. When his candle shined upon my head and when I. Whoa, my Bible just started sparkling. When his, when his candle shined upon my head, and when by his light I walked through darkness. You can walk right through the darkness and it can't touch you. The light of the Lord, it fears you. You know why? You might feel a spirit of fear, but that's what it is. That's, you're just feeling, okay, that's a spirit, not the spirit of fear. It's fearful. <laughs> Thank God I don't have any fear. It's not me. I feel a spirit of fear. <laughs> I feel the spirit of God. <laughs> it's God, you know. Spirit of fear, spirit of God. <laughs> I'm just going to walk in. I'm a child of light, so I'm going to walk in the glory. Hallelujah. It's God's glory. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> you guys see it? Spirit of fear, it's not you. Okay, good. Oh, uh, when, when his candle shined upon my head, when I, when by his light I walked through darkness. Come on, it's his light. As I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. The secret of God upon my tabernacle. Not within, but upon. He was a reveal, he was the poetry of God. He was revealing secret, sacred mysteries just by his life. Everyone saw that he was righteous because he manifested the righteous one through his own lifestyle of God coming upon him and just manifesting. Isn't that what you want? You want God, people to read God's poetry, which, which you are. Lushata. When I was in the days of youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle, as I was, okay. When the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were about me, so he had his family around him. When I washed my steps with butter, come on, washed his steps with butter, anointing. He was walking in the anointing, he was washing his steps with butter. Washing is like just 
He was so cleansed, so pure. He was walking in the anointing and the anointing was breaking off everything that's not of this world. Uh, I mean, everything that's of this world off of him. He's walking in the butter. Come on, let's walk in the butter. Butter is oil. My, he said, look at this. When I wash my steps with butter, you want to walk in a pure life? Walk in the anointing. Walk in the butter. Walk in the oil. Walk in the anointing that dripped down from Aaron's beard, you know, from his head. And all. Walk in unity in the spirit with Christ in the rest of the body. There's no superstars. Shatane. The, and the rock poured out, poured me out rivers of oil. Hold on a sec. Shut up. Oh my God, let's go leave the door open. When the rock poured out rivers of oil. Rivers of oil. God, we want rivers of oil. <laughs> if you'll pour out rivers of oil for Job in an old covenant, you can pour out rivers of oil in the new covenant through us. Anoint our eyes, anoint our ears, anoint our mouths, anoint our nose, anoint our bodies, anoint our hands, anoint our feet to walk in butter. <laughs> we want to walk in the butter, Father. Wash our steps in butter. Let the butter just come and smear us, Father. And let the heat just come and torch it up so it's just bubbling butter. Shaka. Wash your steps in butter. Walk in the anointing and you will not desire the things of the flesh. Desire the things of the spirit and the things of the flesh will be so detestable to you, you will not want them. Because the, you know, the spirit life is your true life. It's what you were created for, to walk in. Hallelujah, man. Do you want your steps washed in butter? Ask God. Hallelujah. I'll give you a quick testimony of this guy. This guy was discipling me. He was a he was a pretty much new believer too. Well, he knew the Lord for about six years. Or I was I knew the Lord about six months. And uh, he was discipling me, man. He'd always come over to my place. He was the John Lee guy I was telling you about early, about a couple hours ago. <clears throat> he came over to my house, man. And he's like, uh, "All right, Chris, let's worship God." So. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's what we're here. Let's worship God, Shaka. So, I love this guy in that. Wow, I felt something on that. <laughs> so he would come over to my house. He was the guy who started on the phone, you remember? And then he was talking like he was at an auction when the glory showed up. And I got so drunk, I couldn't even get off the floor. In the Holy Ghost, okay? Holy Spirit's like wine, so, you know, Get your natural mind out of the way. He came over to my house and he would pray with me. We would sing songs together. And one day, <laughs> he's like, Chris, uh, I'm going to anoint you. Do you got any oil? Anoint me? I thought that's for a priest. You know, <laughs> not only the priest can anoint someone. I had I had no idea of the scriptures or anything. I, was, I read the Bible, I think, once through like a newspaper and it was really boring at this time. So I had no grid for revelation or anything. And he's like, no, 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 man, we can do that. Come on. Uh, you, got any, you got any oil? I don't know. I said, I don't know. Let's go upstairs and check in the kitchen. <laughs> so we open up the fridge. There's this big pack of lard, like just this hard lard. And he grabs this and like, this will do. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And so we go back downstairs in my basement. We're like, so what do we do, man? How do you anoint me? What is this for? It's like, I don't know, you're just, I'm just gonna anoint you and you're gonna feel the Holy Spirit or something like that. I'm like, okay, whoa, yeah, let's do that. So they're like, okay, put your hands up. And then, uh, and then he's like, he takes this big chunk of lard. <laughs> he, says, he says, he starts praying for me. I can feel this wind. It's like this hot wind. I'm like, whoa, I can feel the hot wind blowing. And then I opened my eyes, my hands were right by my vent. You know, it was just the wind. I'm like, John, get out of here, man. What are you doing? Get this stuff off me. What are you doing? You gotta be a priest, man. You know? So, 
<laughs> She's like, okay, let's just worship the Lord. Put on some music. <laughs> and so we put on some worship music. And then he, <laughs> he jumps up. He's like, he's jumping around like this. Like, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then, bam, I hear this thud. And I have my eyes closed, right? I'm still on the feeling, feeling the wind from the vent and the, you know, blowing the hot air to, to heat up the house. I look at the floor. He's like on the floor. Ooh, 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 ooh. He jumped up and he hit a beam in my house. <laughs> That's who discipled me. <laughs> he, out, he got his driver's license. And then he's like, Chris, let's go for a drive. Let's go evangelize. Okay. <laughs> so then we're, we're driving in the car. And then uh, and then he just cuts off this person. They're, ah! And they're like, they're swearing at him. And then <laughs> he's like, oh, God, forgive these people. They don't know what they're doing. I'm like, John, you just cut them off. And then he just drives nearly onto people's lawns. And he's scaring. I had to depend on Jesus, man. He taught me dependence on the Lord. And we'd be driving in the car with our friends and stuff like that. And he's like, I got a good idea for evangelism. Let's go pick up a hitchhiker and we'll just drive really fast through red lights and then we'll ask them if they want to receive Jesus. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, it was so, whoa. So we had no idea. We didn't have a lick of wisdom. We had a lot of fun. They would go to the malls, and they were, they were, I wasn't there this time. He told me about it. He's like, okay, uh, Richard, you go to that side of the mall. I'll go to this side of the mall, and we're going to tell everyone to repent, and Jesus is coming. <laughs> so they're like, hey, everybody, repent. Jesus is coming. <laughs> and everyone, the whole mall just went silent. And they're looking at this Korean guy and then this other guy, my friend RC, and they're like, and then it goes loud again. Like, what a bunch of nutcases. <laughs> yeah, we were just learning back then how to depend on the glory. We would sit outside and like, I, we brought our guitars and we were worshiping God outside. And then whoosh, we could hear the thunder coming in. It starts raining. I'm like, John, we gotta get inside. Our guitars are gonna wreck. He's like, I'm worshiping the Lord, Jesus, lover of my soul. And he's, he's out there, me and my buddy, we just got in the car. We're like, we're not getting wet. I'm not going to wreck my guitar. And he's, we saw he's out there worshiping God in the rain. He didn't even care about his guitar. The presence of God was more important to him than his guitar. That's cool. And then another time I saw him in the dirt, there was bugs crawling. He just got on his face before the Lord. He didn't care what people thought. He taught me a lot of cool things and he taught me a lot of things what not to do. <laughs> so you can learn from your mistakes and you can learn from people who are just like, just whatever, making mistakes. So, but anyways, <laughs> sidetrack, bunny rabbit trail. <laughs> Kill that rabbit. Let's get back into this. You want your steps washed in butter. <laughs> You know, the, the zeal of man, it's funny, but it's not, it's not going to help the kingdom, man. Trust me, I've dragged people out of wheelchairs. I told people to go sell their wheelchair and get a skateboard, and I was going to go with them to the pawn shop. And, you know, but I've also seen people get out of wheelchairs. So, you know what? It's all about your heart, your spirit life, and obeying God and doing what He wants to do. Not trying to control Him. You know, you want, you want to follow the Holy Spirit, <laughs> you know, <laughs> a lot of people want the Holy Spirit to follow them with their, with their church program. That's not the way it works. We're led of the Spirit. That means he's, we're following him. So get the blueprints from the Holy Ghost. The reason I'm making videos right now is because I had a, I went to a meeting, loose, I went to a meeting, shut <laughs> up. And uh, this guy was preaching and I had a vision in this meeting that I'm just scattering seed, throwing seed, whatever. And so, you know, and I got another prophetic word. Someone saw me making videos and on the radio and stuff like that. So I'm just making, I'm just, I'm just doing, and I felt sauce. I felt the substance of God coming right through that prophetic word. So I'm making videos. I've, I have a podcast channel, whatever, Podomatic. 
And uh, I just sit here and I get, I get jacked up in the Lord, man. I just spend time with the Lord. And uh, what, what, what better life? I just, I get to minister to God all day long. Wow. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful life. You can too, you know. The kingdom of heaven's within you. The kingdom of God is within you. So just get jacked up on the Lord. Jacked up means just like you're back up and uh, 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 like a jack, you know, it's pushing you back up into the heavenly places in Christ so that you're just detached from the earth. But your body's still here to manifest the reality where you're sitting. Hallelujah. Where you're sitting in Christ in heavenly places. When I was when I washed my steps with butter and the rock poured me out rivers of oil. The rock is Christ. Oil is the spirit. You know, rivers of oil. You want oh shut down. You want rivers? <laughs> thank you, Father, for the holy angels. I thank you, God. I just pray that you open up our eyes to see even more. You know, it's not even thank you, God, for the pastors. <laughs> The same thing, man. They're ministering spirits. Shata, what do you think a pastor is? He's a minister of the spirit. An evangelist is a minister of the spirit. A prophet is a minister of the spirit. A teacher is a minister of the spirit, the teaching of the spirit. An apostle is a minister sent from heaven of the spirit. You know, a son of God is a life giving spirit. Your spirit. You as born of the Spirit is Spirit. So let's just live out of our identity in Christ and be Spirit. Amen. Shata. Okay, when I wash my steps with butter and the rock poured me out rivers of oil. God, I want that right now in Jesus' name. More rivers of oil. When I went out of the gate through the city, when I prepared my seat in the street, the young men saw me and hid themselves. The aged arose and stood up. The princes refrained talking and laid their hand on their mouth. The nobles held their peace and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth. When their ear heard me, then it blessed me. When the eye saw me, it gave witness to me. Why? Because he was walking in the sauce. You know, when someone's walking in the sauce, you know, you, you want to hear what the sauce is saying. <laughs> you want to hear what the spirit is saying. Oh, shaka lauka. That's what I want. I want to hear only the sauce, man. I want to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. A lot of people give me prophetic words and stuff, and it's just not even God. <laughs> There's no spirit on it. Some of it's actually demonic. I've seen some demonic words, and I, I, I've been more calm now. I used to just mock them, and, you know, <laughs> I told you about that one. I mean, Elijah did it. You know, the false prophets of Baal. <laughs> this guy came up to me. He's like, that tattoo is an abomination. He's disturbing the whole service. I'm trying to worship God, you know, in the spirit. And he's like, ah, ah, ah. he's singing out of tune. And then he comes up to me, gives me this false prophecy where there's no spirit on it. It's just pure filth. Let's say if the Lord, that's an abomination, blah, blah, blah. And I just said, oh, thank you, Lord, for sending this guy here to give me $1,200 to remove my Aussie tattoo. <laughs> and then he's like, no, 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 no. I was like, what? God wouldn't send someone here to condemn me. He always sends the answer. You're the answer to my to getting the tattoo removed. I don't have 1,200 bucks. Then I then I got a word of knowledge for someone who had something wrong with their ear. I think it was a word of knowledge. Anyways, I went to go pray for that person's ear, and I don't know if they got healed or not. I was still kind of a baby in Christ, but whatever. But now I'm like I've kind of like calmed down. I try to bring people into the presence, but you can only have so much tolerance with religious devils because they just want to debate and argue and uh, so I don't even waste my time I just leave you know I'll, I'll sit there I'll try to give them a hug and release the glory on them and if they can't handle that I'll just leave I'm not gonna sit there and try to produce fruit in someone who's full of pride if you want fruit that remains you'll sow it into the humble heart because they have that's good soil a hard heart Leviathan, as I said earlier in the video, the, 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 the air cannot pass through his scales. Scales are snake nature. You don't want the demon nature, which is pride. 
want humility, which is open to God, letting the Spirit of God flow through you. Hallelujah. Yep. When I went, okay, shakata. When uh, the, ear, the ear heard me, then it blessed me. When the eye saw me, it gave me witness, gave witness to me. Because I delivered the poor that cried, and the fatherless, and him that had none to help him. The blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me. And I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. Come on, that's good works. Shut up. I put on righteousness and it clothed me. Come on, you wearing Christ? <laughs> Use your armor. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. I was eyes to the blind. Come on, this is prophetic of Jesus. He's our eyes. And my and feet was I to the lame. Those who can't walk in heavenly places, Jesus is the feet. He's got the preparation of the readiness of the gospel. Like his, the gospel shoes of peace, I call them, man. But this is what they're really called. The armor of God. Right here. Uh, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace. If you're not walking in peace, you're not walking in the gospel. Or you might be walking in peace, but then you're surrounded by an attack of the enemy. But God's given you eyes to see past the darkness. The kingdom revelation within you is always greater than the darkness around you. Darkness can only cover the face of the deep. The face. But the deep. Come on, let that kingdom light. Deep calls out to deep with the noisy water spouts. Just let that deep of God within you just break through. It's a breakthrough. <laughs> Shut up. Anyways, gospel of peace shoes. <laughs> That's what you want. I put on righteousness and put on righteousness and it clothed me. Jesus is our righteousness. And my judgment was a robe and a diadem. I was eyes to the blind and feet was I to the lame. I was a father to the poor and the cause which I knew not I searched out. And I break the jaws of the wicked. Whoa. When someone's speaking wicked words, you just with the hammer of righteousness. <laughs> Breaking jaws, man. You need the jaw breaking anointing. God, let the jaw breaking anointing come. Break the jaws of the wicked. You know what that Not the people. Come on, get a grip. It's when the when evil spirits are lying to people. You just break their jaw and release truth into their spirit. Revelation knowledge always takes out Goliath. How else are you supposed to kill the enemy? What happened, my? <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Shut up. And I broke the jaws of the wicked. I plucked the spoil out of his teeth. The, 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 the devil roars about like a raging lion. And your job is to free the sheep from his mouth. Mouth speaks of words. Mouth speaks of lies that have been spoken to them. You know, speak the truth, be the truth. You gotta be so full of the Holy Ghost that you become a, tr a river of life. You're made in the image of God, right? God is the river of life. You need to be so transformed into back into His image that you become a river of life. God is a life-giving spirit. Jesus is a life-giving spirit. Whoa, Ashoka. And He's made you a life-giving spirit in His image. Because He's manifesting His life through your spirit. It's his life. Always give him the glory. Come on. Don't, don't, get, don't get dull. You know, be sharp. And let his spirit just flow through you. In whichever way, capacity that he wants, that he wants to. You can only pull so many people out of the wheelchairs before you realize that this is your will. Although it's God's will, you're not doing it his way. <laughs> you know? 
You can only do your thing for so long before you realize that you're doing your own thing. When God starts showing up, you're doing God's thing, God's way. I just plead the blood of Jesus on the minds of everyone listening, that you'll give them the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. My face glows when I go like that. Ah, <sighs> Jesus, I love you, Shanta. Then I said, I shall die in my nest, shall multiply my days as the sand, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, that was good. You know, the verse six. When I washed my steps with butter and the rock poured out rivers of oil. Ugh. God, we want those rivers of oil for our lampstand. Let that light never go out. The first purpose of the anointing is to minister to God. That was the priest's duty, is to minister to God so he can minister to God's people. The level that you minister to God is the level that God can minister through you to the people because you've opened yourself up that wide for God to come through. So you may as well just open yourself even wider to God. You know, how, how much of God can you manifest? How much of the bread of life can you manifest? How much have you eaten of his presence? Is how much you can manifest through your gates. If you stay open. The gate is to be in the book of Revelation. The gates are to never be shut. They're to be open day and night. Actually, there is no night there. But, shut katamana bakite. Let's read it. This is Revelation chapter 22. And he showed me a pure river of, of water of life, as clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street of it, on either side of the river, was there the tree of life. The tree of life is everywhere. It's omnipresent. That's kind of cool. which bare twelve manner of fruits <coughs> and yielded her fruit every month. <coughs> and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. I thank you God for the healing of the nations. <laughs> thank you for the tree of life, Jesus. I just eat your flesh. I don't drink your blood. I receive all that you have for me, Father, this day. Father, give us this day our daily bread. Hallelujah. Give us this day our daily bread. You need to eat daily bread every day. If you don't go one day without eating, you get weak. You need to eat spirit. You need to hear the words of the Father speaking to you. Me too. Ugh, shut up. And there shall be no curse. Hallelujah. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servant shall serve him, and they shall see his face. I want to see his face again. He shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. Boom. His name is all you ever see, think, meditate on, because it's pure life. You've received life. His name will be in your forehead. He has become your head. There shall no night, there shall be no night there. They have need, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and Ever. You want to reign with Christ? Get into Him. Forsake the ways of darkness. Forsake the meaninglessness of this world. I'm talking to myself too. If we forsake all, we can receive all. And He said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent His angel to show unto His servants the things which must shortly be done. Notice how it said servants. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, hear and see, hear and see, you got to just more than see, you got to hear. You got to hear and see. I fell down to worship. 
before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. And he saith unto me, See thou do it not? For I am thy fellow servant of thy brethren with the prophets of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. Yeah, I don't even worship man. So many people worship man because they're anointed. You know, get over man. <laughs> worship God. I, I'm thankful for the angels. You know, I, I like them. I love the I love the presence of the angels. I love the anointing they carry. I love the living creatures, the cloud of witnesses, my brothers, my sisters. I love pastors, apostles, prophets, sons of God, teachers, little grandmas with teeth falling out, babies that can teach me. I love every realm that God moves through, even nature. But I don't worship any of that. I worship God. Worship is full, absolute surrender and yieldedness and making yourself vulnerable. I worship God and obey. Obedience is like the greatest key to walking in more sauce. Get the obedience right and uh, you'll be walking in heavenly delight, no problem. But first, before you even have obedience, you gotta actually build a relationship in Christ. Hallelujah. Keep the sayings of this book. And he saith unto me, seal not, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book. For the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. You know why he's saying this? Because he's speaking from eternity. And he sees everything the way it's going to be. You know, once you're sealed, like, man, get into the glory and stay there. Don't leave. Don't, nothing is worth leaving the manifest presence and glory of God. Hallelujah. It's true, man. Check up. And behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Look at that. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. My reward is with me. Your rewards. Like Jesus' reward is with him. You want a reward? Be with him. <laughs> my reward is is with me. Your calling is with Him. Your rewards are Him. My reward is with me. The reward that you want, it's with Him. It's to be with Him. Now, the measure of your reward is the closeness that you've opened your spirit man up and to let Him out through this world and to love Him and to love people. That's the measure of your reward. How much did you let God have His will? How much of the presence of God did you manifest on the earth, through the earth? How much did you change the world into the kingdom of heaven? How much? Behold, my reward is with me. <laughs> get over yourself in your ministry and get into God in His ministry. <laughs> You'll have great rewards. The greatest reward the only reward I want is Him. I want to be as close to God. He's closer than the skin on my body. He's closer than my soul and my spirit. He's in my spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. Shut down. Uh, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He's everything. I love you, God. Oh, I just take a break just to shaka. I just receive your presence, Father. I just receive your peace. I just receive nothing I can do to increase your love for me, but I sure can receive. I just ask that you increase my capacity to receive your love, Father. Increase my capacity to receive the manifest prayers of the Oh, I am the beginning. <laughs> Holy Spirit, shut up. 
I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end of the first and the last. Oh, there's way in here. Holy Ghost, shut down. I gotta... Maybe I won't make it ten hours. <laughs> I might just go off into the glory realm right now. Honestly, it's rolling, man. Whatever. Cares. Cares about the video, man. You should know by now that we're here to meet with the presence of the Lord. <laughs> what else are you watching this video for? Are you trying to get some kind of knowledge of good and evil or what? Look, forget everything I just said, okay? Look. <laughs> Get, go to Jesus right now and just say, whole, just fill me up, Jesus. Holy Spirit, fill me up. <laughs> You're my reward, Jesus. You're my reward. I don't care about all the babbling and the talking and the teaching and the preaching and the event. You know, all this stuff is great, but wow, without the presence of God, it just sucks. I want the presence of God. <laughs> yeah. Do everything I said. Don't worry about it. Get <laughs> into the presence of God. <laughs> Holy shaka. I just receive your presence, Lord Jesus. I just receive the Father of glory. Oh my God. I am the Alpha. Give me a second here. Shut the head of the Thank you, Lord. I think you need to strengthen my body, Father. Is feeling a little bit weaker. Alright, we're going to go deeper into Christ, okay? I hope you love Jesus, man, because he's madly in love with you. Jesus loves you more than death. Jesus loves you so much that he'll actually go to death to bring you up into life. Can't, t can't shut that. Hallelujah. You're going to have to help me, Holy Spirit. I think, I think I'm done a little bit here. I had a lot of stuff I wanted to say, but it's not about what I have to say, okay? All right, let's, let's transition. Level two. Let's go into some teaching now. Holy Spirit. Oh, we didn't finish Ephesians. <laughs> Holy. I'm going to bring some comforting words to you, okay? <laughs> oh. These are the words that are written in red and highlighted in the glory. Pushka. John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, planes of existence, reality. That's where we're going right now, into the Father's house. Hallelujah, God. Shaka. I'm having a lot of trouble. It's functioning. I got it. Hallelujah. Father, I just shut that no more. Um, let's sing a hymn. Let's sing to him a hymn. There's a holy shaka. 
I think the rest of the video we're just gonna have to drink and then I'll share some more revelation if God gives me some. I don't even, did I even share any revelation yet? I can't even remember. <laughs> I don't know if I shared any revelation yet or teachings or anything. I hope you got something out of this because I am. I'm getting some, I'm getting really plastered, man. Holy Ghost. I just welcome more. Shata. Alright, we're gonna do it this way. That sounds so nice. Hallelujah. Alright. I was just pausing it. Yeah, I'm actually really playing guitar. It's not an app. <laughs> Let's just sing some more love songs to God. Get into the spirit. Deeper. It's time to go deeper. This is a song I wrote when God healed me out in uh, Redding, California. I read, it's not even a song I wrote, it's just something I was praying to God on my knees outside the prayer room, the prayer chapel.
laughing and crying, just living life, oh God. Just living in life, oh God. Just living in your life, the way it was always meant to be. Nothing can separate me from your love. Nothing can separate I'm gonna be with you forever I'm gonna be